Other people even go to seances. So desperate, so lonely, so distraught are they in the main. There they hope to make contact with the dead and to receive a word of comfort from a deceased friend or relative. And that too is forbidden by God as sinful and also grossly stupid because you cannot make contact with the dead. It is impossible for them to communicate with us. And it is lies and fraud. And there's the well-known story of one of the first modern practitioners in seances and they made cracks with bones in their toes. Are you speaking to us? Are you there? deceased loved one, please signal with a crack, and then hear this, and oh, they removed, and there they were, double jointed in their toes, or whatever it is, making a little crack, and Isaiah 8 makes it very clear, we must go to the living God and his word, not to fraudsters <laughs> and the dead, for guidance and direction in life. Now there are various other sinful means of guidance which are sought by foolish, fearful, impatient, despairing, desperate, or overly curious men and women who know not the light of the gospel. I mentioned just a few. Moving to one serious error that people can make concerning guidance that they think is Christian. It's this notion that someone can be at the center of God's will, or that the person can actually then be out of God's will. So there's God's will, and it's like an archery target, and you can be at the center, the bullseye, or you can be out of it completely. So you've missed the target and the arrow is shot through and hit the fence behind. And for some people, they think that if they take the right university course or catch the right bus, that they're in the center of God's will. But if they take the wrong course or get on the wrong bus, then they're out of God's will. I don't know if you've ever heard this language or spoken with someone who's caught up in this way of thinking, but I remember distinctly a conversation I once had with a woman and she maintained that she was out of God's will and didn't know where she was or what she should do or how she could ever get back on track again. So I tried to explain to her, well, do you mean you're outside of God's will, God's will of decree? His eternal plan and purpose for you when you be born, when you would die, and everything in between. Because you can't escape God's eternal decree because it embraces everything and everyone. And then I got a blank look. The person didn't understand. So I tried again. Do you mean you're out of God's will of command? That is, do you believe that you have sinned? Sinned in a major broken God's commands. Well, if that's what you mean when you say you're out of God's will, then, then you repent, confess your sin, and you seek forgiveness in the cross of Christ. But the lady didn't mean that either. Somehow in her mind, she had made a wrong decision some time ago. And by wrong decision, not even sinful, but somehow or other, she left the path of God's perfect will for her life and she didn't know how to get right back on that path. I told her this is a serious category of confusion here. You're all mixed up. If you have done something you know to be wrong, confess your sin and know forgiveness. And then you must fulfill your calling in the position in which God has placed you as a wife and a mother. Poor woman 
everyone still believed she was out of God's will. She didn't know where she was. She didn't know what she was talking about. And to me it sounded more like science fiction. Some sort of parallel universe that you somehow dropped out of God's created order. And underneath it all was a scurrilous enemy of the truth, Arminianism. Denying that God is really sovereign and that he knows every aspect of our lives and he has determined it and nothing is outside his counsel. A totally wrong view of God, that God isn't really God and that we can somehow break his eternal plan and purpose for us and end up in a sort of no man's land where not even God can find us. That's misery. Now the necessary foundation of the truth of guidance is the biblical doctrine of Holy Scripture. I'm going to read again 2 Timothy 3 verses 15 through 17. From a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Some simple points about scripture. First, it is inspired, literally God breathed. All scripture is God breathed. It's inspiration. Secondly, it is inerrant because God makes no mistakes and He breathed Scripture and Scripture cannot be broken. John 10 verse 35. Inspired and inerrant Scripture is authoritative because God breathed it, making it His word Therefore it carries his authority, thus saith the Lord. This inspired, inerrant, and authoritative word from God is perspicuous or clear. Verse 15 teaches this. From a child you've known the Holy Scriptures. Children can understand the Bible. From a child that has understood the scriptures there means that I've asked, known the Old Testament scriptures. And that has known these Old Testament scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. From a child with just the Old Testament. That's clear. That's perspicuous. And by the truth of the perspicuity or clarity of Scripture, we mean that its main message can be clearly understood by all through ordinary use of means. Which is not to say that everything in the Bible is easy to everybody. Because there are some things in Scripture which are hard to be understood. Some things which are hard but not impossible. Some things hard to be understood. 2 Peter 3 verse 16 which means that most things are not hard to understand and are therefore clear and simple so that he who runs may read it and understand. In building upon this truth that scripture is God breathed, inerrant, authoritative and perspicuous is this truth. This is the main thing we're concerned with now regarding guidance to which we have been building up. Scripture is sufficient. The sufficiency of Scripture. Scripture is not sufficient if you wish to compile a yellow pages for the telephone numbers in the Limerick area. Scripture is sufficient for the purposes for which God gave it. The most important purposes. 